Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Mexican state, the United Mexican States. But we've got to talk about a fateful day, but the Golden Eagle of the South first. Mexico's history is long, rich, and exceedingly diverse, but has been plagued by one of its main invariable and nearly unending reality, war. Whether it be against America in 1845 or against itself in 1857, Mexico's history has been defined by rebel thinkers and ambitious ideologues launching war after war and revolt after revolt in the fleeting attempts at imposing their own form of government on the rest of the country. This atmosphere of unabated conflict momentarily ended with the rise of the Porfirio Diaz, who secured power by facing both conservatives and liberals across the nation, leading Mexico through an age of unparalleled modernization and advancement, but also an age of inequality and intense social strife. Like all dictators, though, he was not eternal and was disposed in 1911 in a in a mostly bloodless revolution, but his followers didn't stay idle, and they would attempt to restore the old dictatorship with Victoriano Huerta leading a counter-coup in 1913. This moved through the country into the throes of a real civil war, and thus the Mexican Revolution fully began, amid the chaos and ever-shifting web of deals and alliances. Three main sides coalesced, the populist alliance of Pancho Villa, and Emiliano, Emiliano Zapata, the constitutionalist clique of Venustiano Carazana and Al Alvaro Obregón, and finally the Porfit Porfiris camp led by Victoriano Huerta Manuel Mondragon. Then what happened? Also, like, I, I don't speak Spanish, so I apologize for screwing up all these names. But, as a brave in popularity, uh, elected uh, uh, President Emiliano Zapata Salazar prepares for his address to the nation, or people uh, sit at the edge of their seats, in impatient awe as their hero of the Mexican Revolution readies itself, himself. Our noble president is to give a speech to his constituents, explain to them his future plans for a noble people's republic, despite his nerves, and some rumors of violent tractors being distributed throughout the crowd inside or outside the Zocalo. Zocalo. Uh, the president of Zapata already himself to speak to the people. Surely nothing will go wrong in this beautiful, picturesque day. Which, I'm not sure where there's at. A new dawn. Dawn's southern eagle. Also, I'm reading all this, this stuff just because, like, I've never read it before. And, and I almost never play Mexico, so. <clears throat> After years of intense fighting, victory on the Herta and his alliance were defeated in 1915. Even though peace seemed impossible for a moment, as American intervention in their landing in Veracruz led to a short ceasefire between most factions to kick the Yankees out. With Huerta disposed, a conference was called by the populace who invited the constitutionalists to form a united government. Despite their overtures, however, Venustiano Carranza would reject the offer soon after Alvaro Obregón defected from Carranza's clique when he was shown possibly falsified evidence by an officer that Carranza, Carranza uh, planned to have him assassinated. After this defection, Carranza was left virtually with no allies and was swiftly defeated by 1960. However, President Woodrow Wilson of the United States decided that Carranza was better than the socialists and the populist army sent weapons and troops to Carranza's stronghold in Veracruz while also making small expeditions in the north of the border. This new gringo intervention led to tensions and even more defections within Carranza's camp as information about this deal began uh, to leak to the wider public. Finally, in 1920, Pablo González Garza assassinated Carranza and defected to the camp of the now elected president, Alvaro Obregón, by ending the Mexican Revolution. Thankfully, Obregón was able to form a United Government by supporting Pancho Villa's governorship of Chihuahua and appointing Emiliano Zapata as Secretary of Agriculture. And after two successive presidents since the revolution hailing from Obregón's PLM, those being Francisco R. Serrano and Luis and Morones, Zapata and his PNA were elected in 1932. While he was broadly popular, Zapata's election also led to the creation of the uh, Alianza Antisocialista and Liga Democrática, both groups violently opposing his somewhat radical socialist views. With Zapata's fourth year in office just beginning and the rising tensions across the nation, Mexico sits on razor's edge once more, whether it will finally break the cycle of unending strife and warfare. Or if it succumbs to seemingly inescapable destiny once again is another question. La patria es primero. Also, we have national spirit to the revolution's economic fallout. Not great. Outdated and unmotivated army, really bad. Rebellion of the Alianza Antisocialista, opposition from Liga Democratica, and the question of the church. So we're not looking too good right now. Mexico, it always seems like Mexico is in a tough spot, you know. A fateful day. Now what? As an assassin strikes at his bottom. Breaking news has struck Mexico City like lightning, for it would seem that disasters befell the President Zapata's address to the nation. While standing atop a stage, speaking from a lectern to a massive crowd of thousands before him light filled the Zocalo, a bone chilling a crack ripped through the air. Silence in the crowd before a second crack sends Zapata toppling to the ground. A lone government hiding among the masses fired two shots at the President from less than 30 feet away, an embarrassment to a security detail of constitutional guards. Even more embarrassing in the ensuing panic, it would seem that the assassin escaped without a trace, which will certainly have to be dealt with later. As the news of this horrid attack spreads throughout the nation like the thunderous wave, the wounded Zapata had been rushed up to the Iglesia e Hospital de Jesus Nazareno in order for doctors to attempt to save his life. The nation is still reeling from his horrid, uh, this horrid atrocity. The people weep while the opportunistic wolves circle, and many throughout this country now wonder what will become the tiger of the south. Zapata survives. Dios mio, Zapata has been slain. Um, I'll be honest, like, I have no idea what I want to do here, so... You know, let's, uh, let's say he survives. You know, I've never played Mexico, and maybe we'll stay red. So, we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to just leave it up to fate. Uh, what can we do now? Um, 
this glitch or something? Oh, we're over here. There it is. The Caldillo lives. Despite the invalid intentions of the gunman, President Emiliano, Emiliano, Emiliano Zapata survived the assassination attempt during his address to the nation. Now the national government on high alert and paranoid about additional reactionary attacks. All of Mexico's alert and in chaos. It's not the President Zapata and his close allies arrest back control of Mexico. A man up for the gunman. While the nation in turmoil and the national government in chaos, the nationwide manners began to find the man who shot Zapata. As public enemy number one, this unknown assassin became the most wanted man in the nation. With the paranoid government as well as vigilantes and, would, and would, even would be supporters of the madman now on the search for the cross country, it's only a matter of time before the trigger man is found. The uncertain future of Mexico. Mexico now finds itself at a crossroads. With the Zapata regime now thrown into chaos and with the reactionary Republican, monarchists, and Christian groups, among others, taking this opportunity to cause man once again, our once pristine People's Republic has been dragged into the chaotic pit of the unknown. The future of our nation and all of our people now hangs in the balance as the varied forces across the nation prepare to do battle for the heart of Mexico once more. We have no choice but to march into the abyss, ignorant to the possibilities, but prepare for the unknown as best we can. New folk history? The rest of the Mexican folk history will unlock when the elections are held. Uh, political Republic. Man up for the gunman. Through, though the man who shot Zapata was able to escape during the initial chaos of the tragic event, our little police force was able to track him down to a small bar in a motel in the slums of uh, La Zeplati, uh, at the heart of the capital. Here, the trigger man was gunned down by pursuing police, but not before they could squeeze some vital information out of him. Though he did not give up any names, it would seem that this terrorist did not act alone, likely being supported by one of the other number of known criminal groups, defectors, or other enemies of the state. There's not much to go on. We now know that others are responsible, and one criminal's death is not enough until everyone responsible for this attack is brought to justice. Under command of the government, every inch of Mexico City and the surrounding region shall be scoured from the group behind the attack on Zapata is found. We must find these terrorist scum. And I do gotta say, this is a really nice picture of Zapata. That's so nice. Searching for the assassin. With the attempt on Zapata's life still so fresh in the minds of the public, the nation's in a frenzy as nearly every man, woman, and child. Search for the assassin. With most leads coming up as dead ends, we have decided to focus on search efforts on one of two possible avenues of investigation. The most obvious one, and the option supported by the vast majority of our administration, is to investigate the nationalist reactionaries in the AAS, such as the Gold Church or the Synarchists. While a wise plan, there's been rumors circulating around that the true mastermind behind the attack is none other than the famous chameleon and power-hungry revolutionary, Plut Plutarco Callez. As is to be true, it gets unshock waves through leftist Mexican politics in the wider nation, so we must be deadly certain if we want to pursue this line of thought. Callez? The reactionaries are the prime suspect. Um, ah, oh, the revolutionaries. Those, those are the reactionaries, yeah, the re reactionaries. <sighs> Point six one is not great. We are radical socialists. Uh, he's found. His core is found. Only following the only sound le in, uh, sound lead in weeks, our investigators were able to finally track down the group behind Zapata's attackers. It turns out the operation was organized, funded, and planned by a clique of far-right military leaders and nationalists who had taken umbrage with the Zapata's reforms and sought to tear down the socialist regime. When this cabal exposed arrested now behind bars, they will be granted the only justice traitors of their elk deserve, the hot searing of the fired brass and lead. They all mean a traitor's death. And Zapata lives. Nice. Um, anything else? Uh, nothing's loaded, man. Well, I guess that's what you see, maybe. Maybe not. Can't even do this stuff. Yeah, it seems a bit glitched. Maybe Mexico's not being able to play. I mean, there's events and stuff you can do for these guys. Cool. So maybe I'll just reload the save and see what happens. The question of Villa's candidacy. With Pancho Villa leading the new Villistas to over victory over the villain, Callez and his paramilitaries, a new dawn rises over Mexico. Plutarco Callez, El Jefe Maximo, has finally been cast down after his betrayal of Eufemio Zapata and socialist democracy has been brought back to dominance once again. With Pancho Villa serving as an interim president, now elections, new elections have been begun to be organized. However... Pancho Villa himself holds no real desire to hold office or run in the elections, though that has not stopped his allies and compatriots, uh, who have been trying to lift him up as a unity candidate in these tough and uncertain times. The date of the emergency election is looming. Pancho Villa must take it, make his choice. Run? Well, you know what? He retires, because let's throw in some chaos. To declare martial law. Also, I did reload the save, and this did pop up. So, in order to bring about or order to Mexico in the wake of the calamitous assassination attempt, while also seeking to snuff out his reactionary detractors once and for all, President Zapata has declared a state of martial law. With curfews, armed patrols, and suppression of certain civil liberties and more, Mexico has been turned into a police state nearly overnight. Though President Zapata swears it to be a temporary measure, this has still done little to assuage fears. But we have faith in Zapata to know that he's doing what he's doing as he seeks to restore peace and calm the nation. Also, we only lose 65% war support. It's alright. Um, war support... 
your support for more stability. Infiltrate the gold shirts. The gold shirts are a band of anti-theist, nationalist radicals, and brigands functioning as a paramilitary and loosely organized political body that seeks to spread their twisted ideology through violence and fear. In order to take down this vile organization, we shall send elite troops to, the un to go undercover and infiltrate the gold shirts and other groups within the Alanzia, anti-socialista. From there, we shall kill these harmful tumors before they become too dug in. Deploy the militias. Furthering his decree of martial laws, President Zapata has ordered the many disconnected and disorganized socialist militias under his command to spread out into the Mexican countryside in order to spread the will of Zapata as well as keep peace. These are minimum. Many veterans of the revolution themselves shall bring order and peace to Mexico, even if they must bring it at the end of a gun. We're going through research slots, which is pretty normal, but whatever. Um, trade about some civvies up. We have no steel. Yeah, plenty of oil, though, which is nice. Crackdown on the LDs. The Liga Democratica is a corrosive force of liberal, conservative, and reactionary Democrats banded together in hopes of restoring a non-socialist Republican government or democracy here in Mexico. Though some among the ranks are ideologically similar to our ranks, they are still traitors to the revolution, and as such, must crack down on the activities at home. From banning their parties or restricting their right to organize, we show crusty, naive, and corrupt Republicans as we show them the true means of democracy. Implementing martial law. Though no, it flies in the face of all he wants to try to achieve, President Zapata, shaking over the attempts on his life, has moved to enact full martial law throughout Mexico. Loyal militias and police roll on the streets, and could just looking for rebels and would-be assassins as a nationwide curfew of forces all to hide, all to hide away in their homes by the town the scorching Mexican sunsets. Though Zapata lives and throughout the, though the revolution lives on, like some cannot help but wonder at what cost. The ideas of the heroic revolutionaries that saved Mexico from tyranny now comp compromise. Increasingly backsliding with each new day that a nation lives under this new paranoid, paranoid tyranny. The only source is that President Zapata swears this to only to be a, a temporary measure. It is only necessary to safeguard Zapata and the revolution. Absolutely. We can nationalize it. Huh. Yeah, that's not bad. Come on, get, can we get at least 100 political power? Maybe no. Oh, man. God dang it. We can't spend it before we lose it all. God dang it. Third International. France has gone with its designs to hold the first Congress of the Third International as we have expected as it received an invitation. It would be foolish not to send. Nah. We're not going. National Parks. Since the pot has become president, he's begun a policy of creating a number of national parks. Ever since 1936, he has accelerated the program's focused on creating a number of new national parks throughout Mexico, which will protect Mexico's natural uh, environment. You know about this, please go ahead and this stuff too. Hates government. All good and goes out of the same. Let's go with that one. And syndicalism in Spain. Yeah, I'll see what happens. Why not? Deploy the militias. Women's rule. I don't want to use any more stability. Barthi coming to ask for support. That's pretty normal. Goes out of this one. We could join the Ankh. We could join a lot of people. White terror. Um, you're worried about that, please go ahead. As well as world economic crisis and the death of Archbishop Pascual Diaz Barreto. Did the Archdiocese of Mexico announce with great remorse that Pascual Diaz Barreto, Archbishop of Mexico since 1929, has passed away from his mortal life, dying of uh, colitis in the dark reaches of the night? With the Archbishop's seat now lies vacant, and with his passing, Auxiliary Bishop Maximo Ruiz de Flores has taken over administrative duties until the Holy See in Rome declares a replacement for the Archbishop. And his time as Archbishop. Barreto is perhaps one of the most vocal opponents of Zapata's government, due to his apparent socialism and a perceived lack of regard for the Church. It should also come as no surprise that as he threatened in late, late 1935 to excommunicate Zapata and in all of the government they failed to disavow socialism, although this never materialized, along with his opposing the revolutionary government. Under the Archbishop, the Church turned a blind eye to the ASA and the various actions against the Republic. While never outwardly supporting them, Barreto also never said anything to hamper the ASA, and on a few occasions it seems he had actively encouraged members of the Church to join them. Reactions to the death of the Archbishop have seemed to be met with almost as many mixed reactions as there are people in Mexico. Those to the left, and even a few in the center of the political sphere, have almost celebrated his death, decrying his involvement with the ASA to paramount treason. Those to the right have come out of the woodwork to describe their deep sadness at the loss of one of Mexico's most ardent anti-socialist public figures. Regardless, with his passing, there's been a large hole which is open within the hierarchy of the Church, a hole that only the successor of St. Peter himself can fill. A complicated man, to be sure, of course. Basic machine tools, huh? Are you sure the masters? Oh, the Mexican samurai. A peasant farm and and peril diver born in the Fukuoka prefecture in Kyushu, Japan. It's a wonder to many how the man once truly known as Noaka Kingo came to serve our state, immigrating to Mexico at the age of 17 with his brother and uncle. Nonaka settled in Osaka, working on a coffee plantation before retiring from the harsh work and traveling briefly to the United States. Upon his return, he settled in the north in the state of Chihuahua, being taken in by a local family, who eventually adopted him, baptizing him with the name Jose Gerano Kingo no Kana before his host. He took on training as a nurse in a local uh, hospital. Later, while visiting a fellow Japanese immigrant in 1911, Nonaka became stranded and cut off from any possibility of returning home quickly as the Battle of Casa Grandes broke out. Caught in the middle of a hellstorm, Nonaka jumped into action, tending to the wounded and eventually saving the life of the famed Francisco Madero after he was shot in the hand. Subsequently recruited into Madero's army, Nanaka became a war hero as he worked with the titans like Pancho Villa as an army doctor throughout the conflict before settling into his own medical practice as the chief nurse of the Ciudad Juarez Civil Hospital. 
He even served as a principal founder of the Instituto Nacional de Cardiologia. A lover of photography as well, Nanak has been recently hailed as a fine artist for his archival pro uh, photos of the revolution and rapidly developing locals such as Tijuana on top of his numerous military and medical accolades. Even settling down with a fine Mexican wife named Petra Garcia Ortega, who served alongside him as a nurse and having five children all their own, Nanaka, I was proven to be one of the uh, archetypal examples of a successful and patriotic Mexican immigrant. Let us hope that our own homegrown samurai protects Mexico for years to come. A shining example of successful immigration. How much stability? Pretty sure the masses. Though our administration has taken steps uh, recently that may seem uncharacteristic of Zapata and its originally stated goals for Mexico, it's only been done in the face of such calamity as to preserve stability in our society. We must reassure the masses of this truth and promise them that an end to these restrictions and drastic temporary measures will soon come to an end. All we must do first is finally and fully secure Mexico. Congreso Nacional de Mujeres. Uh, the National Congress of Women was founded today to help discuss women's rights on the national level. Issues relating to women's suffrage is the most important things discussed, although other issues such as prostitution, female literacy, health, abortion, and more were discussed in the Congress. Well, this is only the first Congress. A future one is already being planned for the future. Vivan las mujeres de Mexico. Uh, so, yeah, not bad. Expand el Ijedo program. The collectivized and cooperating farming plan aimed at increasing production and worker quality of life known as the Edijo uh, uh, system has been one of the hallmarks of the Zapata administration, with the president pushing for their expansion using greater funding since he first took office. But, now in a temporary position of unmatched power and authority, Zapata has taken the opportunity to finally double down on the Ejito programs active within the nation. Nearly all agricultural production soon shall be tied to the system in one way or another as the president finally achieves his dream of nationwide agricultural reform. A brother's duties. Ever busy with the matters of state, President Zapata has little time to waste on personal relationships outside of work. It's kind of like me. However, no matter how busy the President gets, he always has time for his beloved older brother. If you me all, Zapata, a fellow revolutionary but one who disdains the alumnate of any notion of political power or responsibility, has recently gotten into some hot water and now requires his younger presidential brother to bail him out. I'm going out on another one of his famous benders. If you me all, Zapata got exceedingly drunk one night. Went to the home of a rival general. I proceeded to scold and beat the father of said rival before puking in the garden and returning to the Palacio Nacional to crash on his brother's couch. Eh, I wish that was me. Even forgetting what he did due to the blackout he drank himself into. A few now has numerous Mexican generals up in arms with the son of the beaten man, one Maximo Camancho, promising to kill if Fumio should get the chance. Using his powers and influence as president, Zapata has been able to smooth the situation over, giving Camacho a promotion as compensation, and putting his own brother in temporary military leave until the entire mess blows over. Regardless of outcome, though, this has just been another showing as Zapata's personal bias is further tarnishing his reputation. Please, Efumio, watch how much you drink. And uh, no political power. Not typical. A Busan Treaty? That's nice. Ah, uh, Rainforest Ray. More coordination is nice. Also, I'm trying to keep up on how much we have there for political power, uh, army XP, because I'm not sure which way we're going to go. We're probably going to go Superior Firepower just because it's my first campaign playing in Mexico, but we'll see. Socialist democracy secured. Through harsh methods and tough choices, President Zapata has finally secured his peace and ordered Mexico once again following the attempt on his life, but at a cost. Civil liberties have been suffocated under the martial law, as streets and badlands run red with the blood of reactionary enemies. The jails are filled with democratic agitators and the Ejito system. Once voluntary and optional, it is now choking out every other sector of our agricultural industry. That Mexico is at peace, and though we may prosper, has been achieved through a compromise on Zapata's original image. A compromise he forged himself as he bastardized his own ideas. Socialist democracy. Has been secured, but Zapata's final term slowly comes to an end, many wondering how it will be remembered. As a hero of the Mexican Revolution, or as a tyrant that allowed his own moral fears to cause him to become what he hated. Or perhaps his party or another can resolve the dichotomy in the next elections. Mexico muralism. Since the 20s, an artistic movement has begun in Mexico to help spread the ideals of the revolution throughout the country. See throughout Mexico would have murals painted on the public buildings. The murals cover numerous topics mixing social and political messages with Mexican nationalism. The big three are seen as the leaders of the movement are Diego Rivera, Jose Clemente, Ozoroco, and David Alfaro Siqueiros. Every city needs a new murals. just bishop. A wonderful news for the Catholics of Mexico is His Holiness appointed a new head for the Church of Mexico. The new Archbishop of Mexico is to be none other than Miguel Dario Miranda, formerly a teacher at Leon Seminary. Exactly why the Bishop of Rome would pick such a man as to be the next Archbishop will ultimately remain only for the Pope and God to know, but as an artist, guess why? Miranda, despite only being a priestly teacher, has a history of social justice, being the director of the National Social Secretariat. Along with the nearly unending examples during the pastoral work, Miranda, despite being somewhat of a traditionalist, lives and breathes the Church's social teachings to a T. With the Patriarch of the West's own high regard for social justice, it makes sense that such an exemplar of the Church's teachings would be chosen. Regards to the reasons, Mexico once again finds itself with an Archbishop, long may reign, and new face with new ideals. As we expand this program, the E-Program, which I cannot pronounce that word very well, can I? But oh well. Still trying to build ourselves up, we did grab, um, 
AMSA, AMSA, so more civilian military factory construction speed, more industrial research speed, so that'll be good. Yeah, getting rid of this negative 80% war support, Jesus Christ, that is so bad. Yeah, that's one of the worst things I've ever seen in terms of national focuses. But I'm sure it's not the worst. <clears throat> Accelerate the Ejido's programs. Free to fulfill his ultimate pa policy goal as one of the most nations, as most of the nations still realize from the current chaos. President Zapata's move forward to massively fund and expand the Ejito's system. At his beloved program, I'll collectivize agriculture that he fought heroically for for the revolution, and again at the beginning of his term, Zapata's began to pump massive amounts of state capital in the Ejito's programs. All across Mexico's countryside, new collectivized farms and ranches shall consume thousands of square acres of arable land for our agrarian nature. And expertise shall not be matched. Zapata will be a socialist agrarian paradise here in Mexico. Finally, free any red tape to stop him. Collectivization is the only future for Mexico. 30% not bad. Um, I don't know the I do want like 90 a day. I think this would be better for us overall. Eh, grab that one. Screw it. And remove post war assassination chaos, which is kind of sucks. Oh, there goes Radical Austria. Slovenia declared World War II. And there goes Vienna. Alright, what's up next? Bill Murray. Oh boy. Or Bill Murray? Not Bill Murray. Some guy. Also, we do want to go this way too, because we want to get future warfare, so modernize the Ejercito Mexicano. Uh, the Mexican armed forces are still outdated, using outdated equipment from the Valkyrie Guerra, and our military doctrines and tactics have also fallen behind the times over the past decade. We have to move forward from the revolution we are to protect our influence over the Americas once more. Our nation is a major player in North and Central America economically and diplomatically, so our army must be able to back up our words. Point three is definitely better than it was before. Revolutionary democracy survives. Establish the Maximato. Sinarco Integralist Leadership Debate. Lenin of the West. Heir to Karl Marx. Austrian Empire's gone too, huh? A jefe. Later, the Eternal Zen. With Mexico more or less stabilized following the attempt on the president's life, many began to clamor for Zapata, too, and his implemented policy of martial law. Well, his re with his reputation as a freedom-loving hero of the revolution only being slowly more with each passing day and the nation largely to return to the revolutionary status quo, perhaps it is finally time to end these harsh laws in order to save face at the end of the term. But the rural countryside uh, still may harbor traitor snakes, so it, may be, so it would be best to keep these laws in effect just a little while longer as the Fata finishes out his term, with new elections being organized in preparation already. Laws won't stay in effect long regardless of what happens. What is on the line, however, are the last shreds of Zapata's heroic reputation, but the choice lies with the president. Secured and martial law? Uh, Mexico must be saved. Martial law shall be enforced until the end of Zapata's term. Sure, I like stability. And we lost all the political power. I don't know. I'm just. I don't really have a, a one set direction where I want for us to go. So that's why I'm like, let's see what happens. Did that one is almost 1937. You might as well grab some more output at this point. Nice. By the way, to wait for elections. Uh, honestly, to make it easier on us, we'll probably just go. Mobile, superior firepower, not mobile warfare. Guerra de Guerreros. So, Herederos de Guadalupe Victoria. <clears throat> the most effective fighting force is a professional, well regulated, regular army, such as the army that Guadalupe Victoria led in order to free us from the Spanish centuries ago. But, our armed forces are quite the opposite. We need to reform most aspects of our army in order to move past this period of revolutionary arrival to be more organized like our national forefathers. And we should start with the general staff and the command structure. Even though it makes, I guess, more sense for us to be Zapata's legacy, but. Hmm. <clears throat> I do want to go superior firepower for this one. Ooh, you get more map on that side, though. Do you get map out here? Hmm, you don't. Grand Battle Plan or Superior Firepower. I don't want to do either one of these two. Mass Assault's not great. Mobile Warfare, we're not, I'm definitely not going to focus on tanks, so. As much as I really want to go this way. I'm, I'm sure we'll play Mexico several different times, so. What does this one say? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've got to go that way. I just have to, you know. Let's see the revolution. So the Imperial German order of battle, which makes no sense for us because we're a revolutionary socialist. We'll see where we end up. The Mexican Revolution was one of the largest military events in the recent history of our continent. Together with its sheer size, it's also brought new military tactics and weapons to Mexico. We should build up our army on the less lessons learned during the war. And future warfare. The future warfare is dependent on the future of the equipment used. In order to prepare for the conflicts of tomorrow, which will undoubtedly challenge the integrity and freedom of Mexico, what do you think about today about the future of equipment? Which is what I really wanted us to get. Also, we have this one, I guess. Deeper to the border. That makes more sense. Why did he flip around? Oh, the Sonora. Armored tanks would bring, be the Avenger of victory? That seems like this should go on this side, because this is more mobile warfare. But who am I? I am just a guy on the internet who complains on occasion, especially to the devs, but whatever. 
Mm, yeah, definitely this one's good. Uh, New Age Beyond the Revolution. Because we have expanded Armado de Mexico. From the Fuerza Area Mexicana. La Reconquista de la Sesión Mexicana. Mexicana. The Organized North. Sets of Anglo Religions. Tinseltown. Alamo. The Guardia Fronteriza. Recruit Vigilantes. Outwards and onwards. You know, the Cosmic Race. Proper place in North America. Border Claims. Sunset Invasion. Huh, that's cool. Future Warfare. Soldadas. Soldaderas. During the Mexican Revolution, many women fought for their principles of the revolution. These sold soldaderas have proven the strength and will on the battlefield, but women are still frowned upon in the military. We should end this discrimination and permit women to fight in our armed forces, just in case. Promote the Herico Herico uh, Coligio Militar. In order to train the next generation of Mexican officers, we shall grant great funding to the Herico Colegio Militar and implement a series of officer competency tests in order to weed out those placed by uh, in our ranks through nepotism. The academy shall work in tandem with our current military and government to ensure that we have a steady flow of intelligent, calm, and calculated recruits to lead our men in the future. City Imperial German Order of Battle. The modern division has a complicated structure. Meanwhile, Mexican division is just a few infantry battalions. We need to completely restructure the division template of the Mexican armed forces. Which, obviously, you know, doesn't make any sense for, I guess, radical socialists, but whatever. We're going to roll with it anyways. Because we can. Ooh. That's not good. American Civil War is about to kick off, which sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Yep. Go to February. When is our election? Oh, July. So we got quite a few months until that actually happens. So, uh, we're gonna do all this stuff. Uh, study this one too. Um, is that what we're doing? Naval reduction. Order of the battle. Um, so we'll see about when the elections actually do happen. But you know, whatever. Memories. Gun Revolution. If we give local commanders too much autonomy, our armed forces and HQ will drown in chaos once we meet the enemy. As the, no one will know exactly what is happening. We need to regulate and centralize command structure to properly lead the army. Uh, this one better first. Elastic, elastic plans and flexible strategies. Helmut von Mokti, the elder, actually said that no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy, and that there has been perfectly proven by the chaotic battles of the Mexican Revolution. Our plans need to be flexible so they can adapt to new circumstances quickly and conquest of the impassable. Due to our harsh strain and underdeveloped infrastructure, it will be difficult to properly supply a large armies with, with much heavy equipment. We need special units which oversee and organize the supply lines to keep our armies always from the the Agave. Alco has had a long history in Mexico with no election being more popular and infamous than tequila. The Nectar the Agave plant, tequila is made from the sugars naturally present in the plant's thick, meaty leaves and has become part of the fabric of Mexican culture and celebration. With famous brewers like Jose Cuervo and Cuauhtemoc, a Moctezuma Brewery opening their doors once again after the hecticness of their political chaos forced them to temporarily close their doors. The golden sweet nectar of the agave shall once again fl flow again all across our Mexico, a local delicacy, now the presidential election of 1937. It's a part of surviving and hit the hit on his life. <clears throat> our bogus sworn in to mostly recover, but we have rebounded, and this time of chaos is now coming to an end. The next presidential election has been organized and with democracy secured. The main socialist parties have presented their candidates after a tough yet short period of campaigning. It's finally time for the vote to be held and counted after a close race has been declared that. Oh, totalists. Trabajadores went out. Hmm. So there's a lot of different ways. I mean, I want to say red. Hmm. But, I don't know. I think we're probably... Land in the West sounds like a lot of fun, actually. And this is probably the route that a lot of people take, but let's go with that one. I like that. I like, I like being red. Oh, wait. What's wrong one? Oh, this guy does it. Oh, that's actually really cool. A cult of El Jefe Maximo. The heir to Karl Marx would have been really cool. Oh. Demons were the right wing. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's see what this route's like, because I have no idea. Establishing Maximato. Plutarco Elias Calles, El Jefe Maxima Maximo, has managed to become president of Mexico with the support of the Karam, or the Confederación Regional Obrera Mexicana. Kai has firmly believed that the way forward for Mexico is for him to receive total power over the nation, ushering in a set of reforms that will transform Mexico into a true revolutionary state, which is dubbed the Maximato. Under this total state and the Kai as PNR, Mexico shall be guided into a new destiny to reshape our past and embrace a new red future. Ooh, that was a big push war. Ooh, present for life, more daily political power. But you get better civvies here, which I like. 
Nueva Politica Economica. Mexico's economic policies have changed very little in the last decade. We should not stand for it any longer. Callas has decided to take our economic policy towards a new revolutionary height with his new economic policy. This new system will bring a nationalized socialist planned economy to Mexico supported by small amounts of capitalism and private ownership in order to jumpstart our fledging financial system. Cool. Command trains, improve working conditions, military peacekeeping. Uh, oh, the 1937 Oriziba earthquake. At uh, 7.3 on the surface wave, magnitude occurred Oriziba Veracruz. The earthquake has left over 30 people dead and countless more injured. The aftershocks. When fell as far as Mexico City, President Plutarco Callas has called people to ask and help in rebuilding and doing what they can to help the people who have suffered because of the earthquake. Res de Puerto Mexico. Oh boy. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Le Caz. Officially, the Le Caz, or Caz laws, will now be in effect with the goal of controlling and limiting Catholic worship in Mexico, as well as limiting the influence of the Catholic Church. These laws shall reduce the number of priests to one for each 6,000 inhabitants, and add the need for an estate license in order to serve as a priest, and add the need to register at a local office when the preaching will take place. These heavy restrictions shall change or change Catholicism and its vile corrosive influences, slowly freeing Mexico from its grasp of the opiate of the masses, and strengthen the presidency, of course. The presidency of Mexico is not much different than the presidencies of other democracies, or at least it is for now. This is an advantage in order to manage meager coalitions and pesky compromises within the sickly revolutionary democracy. However, Caius is a reformist and needs all the authority he can get in order to achieve his mighty ambitions for the Maximato and to that end. He has proposed a reform that allows the president to have untold amounts of, of executive power, effectively making Caius the most powerful man in the nation with no equal and little checks and balances on his grasp. Mexico shall be one with Caius, and Caius shall embody the New Mexico. Why well, this one first? As we're trying to help out the CSA here, which. Uh, Canada has pledged to support the, of course, federal government right now, so we'll see what happens. Hey, it's a mobilizing boss, nice. Hey, good job, guys. Just don't have supply issues. There you go. Nice, happy 1937, everybody. We're a little behind everybody else, but you know what? Whatever. We're, we're catching up, man. We're catching up. See if he's not looking too bad. We can use more of them civvies right now, so. We're gonna do all three of these. People's factories. Control the Egitos. A purely social education. Ooh, that'd be so good to do. Law of fanatical military. Ooh, more daily political power. Direction Federal de Seguridad. Well, we gotta do a purely social education. Mexico still has the old school system from before the revolution with only a few slight tweaks and reforms being pursued. So now what Kai says invasion for Mexico and as such is ordered the nation to begin a major restructuring of our education system. All children in Mexico shall receive, receive a state mandated, uh, mandated curriculum heavily steeped in social thought and the tenets of the Maximato, ensuring loyal and dedicated citizens for generations to come. this revolution. Mexican muralism as an art form has existed for some time now, but continues to ever evolve under the broad strokes of the masters. Fusing influences from all across the spectrum, including revolutionary politics, futurism, modernism, expressionism, impressionism, and classical Mexican influences, among others. The new pieces created in this foundation of movement continue to breathe life into Mexico's own culture and identity. As masters like Jose Orzo Orzoco, David Sequeiros, Diego Rivera, and Frida Kahlo continue to work in either magic or culture shall continue to reach new and inspiring heights. To help them achieve their goals, artists such as these, along with new musicians, philosophers, writers, theorists, and other cultural creators, shall all be supported, promoted, and even funded by the government in order to ensure the crafts continue. May these masters of the craft guide a new cultural revolution. By the stroke of the brush, we should dash towards a culture future. Now, as much as I want to do this, I want to destroy the AAS. So that'll help give us a little more stability, and then we can expand military and civilian stuff, even though we are now at 11, which is pretty... Pretty decent. Um, do we have anything else here? Cass, yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. More fighters, guns, Cass, motorized, all that good stuff. Super important for a functional army because ours is not quite functional, which sucks as we did see before we faded and fitted out that we can do or create our own faction. Mexican Anarchist Federation. The Mexican Anarchist Federation was founded today, taking inspiration from movements in Europe and the rest of the international. Its aim is to help link up various anarchists, anarchists throughout Mexico in a work, support anarchism, and anarcho-syndicalism within Mexico. Viva anarchismo! It is what it is. Destroy the LD. Ah. Just deal with the church. It's gonna make it more 18 combat with divisions, which are not bad. Support the CSA, we could, but we don't feel like it real. But, le calas. Le de tolerancia de cultos. President Caius has just had a new law to enforce the Constitution's position on secularism. As a law, uh, heavily penalizes the priests and nuns that break the anti religious laws in the Constitution, such as penalizing uh, priests who criticize the government or wearing clerical garb in public. To help enforce the law, Caius has also drafted several decrees to seize church property, expel foreign priests, and close, close monasteries, covenants, 
uh, and religious schools. A number of royal governors there have decided to draft their own laws following the president's decree. The constitution shall be enforced. As we'll do this one, of course, as well. So to say anarchism? Sure, why not? Mexico should not stand by as the reactionary religious clergy now await our foundations any longer. We should revoke civil liberties from our clergy, including the right to trial by jury, outlaw certain religious orders that do not align with our views, and deprive them of property, property rights with the goal of creating a true atheist state. Secularism did not go far enough, for Mexico must be entirely divorced from religion in all of its forms. A loyal and fanatical military. The reason for success during the revolution was the disloyalty of the military elements that switched sides to our cause. While back then that became very useful for our cause, nowadays we consider it a possible threat to our stability. With this in mind, we show reward loyalty to our government and the military and punish dissenting officers, with the motions of necessary and with harsher tactics if our hardened is so forced. Nutrient and ideological indoctrination measures, we shall transfer Mexican armed forces into a favorably loyal and terrifyingly effective arm of the Maximato, while ensuring the total dedication to Calles. That's not bad, but centralize the apparatus of state. The Partido Nacional Revolucionario is a party which currently calls supports Callas. However, he does not lead the PNR, and that has led to some heated arguments between him and other influential figures within the party. To solve this, we should make Callas the leader of the party for, after all, he is already the head of the state. There's no reason why he shouldn't be the head of the party that rules with him, and there's little stopping him if the PNR were foolish enough to refuse. With Callas at the helm of the party, he should be free from any obstacles he moves to centralize the state and greatly weaken the federalism, and the positions of his frequent rivals, the state governors, in order to consolidate power within the hands of the president. Nice. And could control Congress? Yes. Look at that political power gain. And opposition from Liga Democratica. The Congress in a country was meant to secure representation for our citizens, but factionalism and petty squabbles have hindered reform and led to an incapable, ineffectual, and near totally useless Congress. Kayas and the PNR should take complete control of the Congress in order to help them solve their differences and be able to pass the reforms without any further problems. Congress shall just become another tool of Kayas, adding to his legitimate facade and enabling his rise to total power even more. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, also, before we do that, I've never seen this before. Missouri Democratic Organization led by Tom Pendergast, uh, the political boss from Kansas. So, like I said, I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see what else we can do with the United Mexican States under this guy, Plutarco Calles. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great rest of your day.